Kabe to Cha Kabe Vishayo Chadi Akabe Shuda Habe Mahana Kabe Hamahi Rabu Shri Rendavana Vishayo Chadi Akabe. Here we go. All righty. Just one other thing. Okay, welcome to the evening Bhagavad Gita class. Good to see everybody. And let me just one more thing. Spotlight. Here we go. So, welcome to the evening Bhagavad Gita class, and we're continuing with the eighth chapter today of the Bhagavad Gita, beginning with Chaik, uh, text 13, as we go through the Bhagavad Gita. Attaining the Supreme is the name of the eighth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. So first we'll chant Jai Radha Madhava, like we normally do. Jai Radha Madhava Kunya Bihari Jaya Radha Madhuva Kunya Bihari Gopi Jana Malaba Kiri Bharadha Guti Gopi Jana Malaba Kiri Bharadha Guti Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Badachari Yamuna Tira Badachari Jaya Kunya Bihari Chaya Radha Madhuva Kunya Bihari Gopi Jana Malaba Giri Bharada Huti Gopi Jana Malaba Giri Bharada Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Manachari Yamuna Tira Manachari Jaya Radhumad Uva Kunya Bihari Jaya Ranhumad Uva Kunya Bihari Jaya Om Vishnupad Panamahansa Paravidakacharya Also Teda Satishi Shimad His Divine Grace Abhaya Chalana The Bhaktivedanta Gosami Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Iskan founder acharya. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Anandakoti voice nam. Vrindi ki jai. Namacharya. Shila Hrida. Stakur ki jai. Param se koho shi krishna chaitanya. Parabho nechananda. Shila Hrida gadadha. Shila Siddhi Gaur. Bhakta Vrindi ki jai. Shishri Radha Krishna. Go Bhagavata Sayam Kunda. Radhakunda Giri Govardhan Kijai Vrindavadam Kijai Maturam Kijai Dekadavasami Kijai Yumunamai Kijai Shimani Lassi Devi Kijai Samaveda Bhakta Vrindi Kijai Gol Premananda Hari Hari Gol All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to Shri Guru and Gauranda Shri Prabhupada so, 
Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swami Namani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravada Vacharya Nivasesha Sanyavati Pasjacha Vejatani So Om Agana Timananda Shaganjana Shalakya Chakshuram Militam Yena Tasmai Shikarve Maha I offer my respectful obeisances to the lotus feet of my spiritual master is divine grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada who so kindly opened me, my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge while I was blinded in the darkness of ignorance. So we will continue with the Bhagavad Gita study. Here we go. And today I hope we get the right verse. <laughs> Wait, there it is. All right. I think we need to make it bigger for you all to see. Give me one second. There it is. Perfect. All right. Let's move that down a little bit better. Good. Okay. So we are on text 13 <clears throat> in the 8th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. So we begin this text with the sacred syllable Om, which is the pranava in the Vedic literatures. Pranava Sarva Vedeshu. So Om it yekaksharam brahma yaharanam anusmaran ya prayati tajam deham. Ziyati Paramangatim Om. The combination of letters, Om, Omkara, Itidas, Eka, Aksharam, the one syllable, Brahma, absolute, Vyacharan, vibrating, Mami, Krishna. Anusmaran, remembering, Ya, anyone who, Prayati, leaves, Tajan, quitting, Deham, this body, Saha, he, Yati achieves paramam, the supreme gatim, destination. After being situated in this yoga practice and by vibrating the sacred syllable om, om, the supreme combination of letters, if one thinks of the supreme personality of God and quits his body, he will certainly reach the spiritual planets. So as we mentioned before, Many people consider the syllable Ong to be uh, impersonal. But the Acharyas explain that actually it's very personal because A-U-M is Ong and that is Radha and Krishna, the living entity. But that's a very esoteric understanding. So anyway, so if you chant Om and you think of Krishna, and you quit the body, you'll reach the spiritual world. So this is like an and, and, and. You have to do all three things. However, if you just chant Hare Krishna, you end back in the spiritual world. Purport. It is clearly stated here that Om, Brahman, and Lord Krishna are not different. The impersonal sound of Krishna is Om, but the sound Hare Krishna contains Om. So, what Prabhupada is indicating is not that Om ultimately is impersonal. It actually means Radha and Krishna are living entities. However, people chant the word Om or the syllable Om with that intention. So that's why sometimes it's called the impersonal Om, but actually it's not impersonal. The chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is clearly recommended for this age. And so it's recommended in many of the Vedic literatures. So if one quits his body at the end of life chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare, he certainly, whoops, it's a little storm outside. He certainly reaches one of the spiritual planets according to the mode of his practice. Ooh, there's this one of the spiritual planets. So let's just outline that for a second. One of the spiritual planets. Whoops. Let's just unpack that. As we met, well, it's hard to outline it. But in any case, uh, 
As we mentioned many times before, there's many spiritual planets, of which Goloka Vrindavan is the topmost spiritual planet. However, everybody has a different taste. Some devotees, like Hanuman, are more attracted to Lord Ram. And so they go to Lord Ram's planet, which is Ayodhya. We mentioned the other day that Prabhupada said the non-human avatars of Krishna do not have planets in the spiritual world. Sorry to disappoint you. Uh, so the planets that you will find in the spiritual world are of the human form. Because Krishna is never human anyway. I mean, just, you can't say Krishna is human. Krishna has a form like us. We are created in the image of God, as said in the Bible. So, Anyway, so there are different human form avatars of Krishna or expansions of Krishna. And generally we talk about those as Vishnu expansions. But there are many other types of expansions like Lord Ram. And people are specifically devoted to a particular expansion of Krishna. Uh, there's that story about Rupa and Sanatana Goswami's brother, Anupama. And Anupama was very dedicated to Lord Ram. And Rupa and Sanatana Goswami tried to convince him, just chant Hare Krishna. No need to chant. Raghupati Raghava Rasha Ram, Patita Pavana Sita Ram, Shri Ram Jaya Ram Jaya Jaya Ram, Shri Ram Jaya Ram, Jaya Jaya Ram. No need to chant that. I mean, we, we chanted, I chanted, and I love that chant. But my primary chant is Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. So they try to convince him, take as your primary chant. You can also chant Sita Ram, you know, once in a while. But your primary chant should be the Hari Krishna Ma Mantra. And he tried, all night long he was trying just to chant Hari Krishna and not to chant so much Sita Ram, Sita Ram. And he was crying, I can't do it, I can't do it. And then what happened is that Rupa and Sanatan said they were very pleased because it was completely dedicated to his particular Ishta Devata, which means the worshipful personality of Godhead. So everybody has different tastes. Just like in this material world, uh, we have different tastes with different types of food. Just like someone who is living here in the temple said, uh, I really need Indian food. And I really like, what type of food do I like? Not even American food. I, <laughs> whatever type of food I like, that's my taste. You know, raw food, uh, sauerkraut, and things like that. So that's my taste. But if you offer sauerkraut to someone from India, they, will, may, they may run away. So everybody has a particular taste in worshiping Krishna, too. That's natural because we're all individuals. And even those who worship Krishna and the supreme spiritual planet, Krishna Loka, they have different tastes there too. We mentioned the five basic tastes, or what we call rasas, which means taste. And amongst those five, there's infinite variety. It's so wonderful. There's all so much variety. Not that everybody should have the same taste in devotional service. So, so anyway, one of the spiritual planets. The devotees of Krishna enter the Krishna planet. Aloka Vrindavan, Jai. For the personalists, there are also innumerable other planets known as Vaikuntha planets. The word Vaikuntha, as we explained before, means to be without anxiety. This material world is anxiety. I was listening to a class, actually it was this morning, Prabhupada was talking about anxiety in this material world. I mean, we're always thinking about what will happen, what could happen, and uh, it's interesting, Prabhupada gave the example when he was flying in the airplane that uh, one time, I guess, there was a little bit of trouble or there was a storm or there was something was happening so the airplane was shaking turbulence in the air. And everybody was in anxiety. And then when it landed, guess what? Everyone went, Haribo. No, they didn't go Haribo. 
They all clap their hands. I mean, I'm sure many of you have been in an airplane that's been, had, had some turbulence, and then when it lands, everybody claps for the pilot or claps for themselves and just whoo, feels it. <sighs> Relief. <sighs> whoo. Wow, I was scared. <laughs> Where's the devotees chant, Hare Krishna? So Prabhupada used that as an example to illustrate the point when we're in an unnatural environment, that environment itself can be the cause of anxiety, or is the cause of anxiety. So we are in an unnatural environment. So we may not be in an airplane that's shaking or whatever, but we're in an environment where you know, anything could happen. We could die in a minute, or in a year, or we can die in our sleep, or we can get this disease, you know, you go to the doctor, and the doctor, you know, just like every year, you go to the doctor, and they give you all these different tests. You know, they even want to uh, shove a scope up for you. Anyway, we won't describe what that is. They want to do so many things, you know, test your stool, test your uh, blood pressure. Actually, it's, it's not quite interesting. So, test your temperature, test your eyesight, look in your mouth, uh, they have other tests too. Anyway, whatever, a oh, blood test showing you a full battery of blood tests where you have all these different measures of the ingredients in the blood and there's a normal range and there's an abnormal range. And so you're waiting, and nowadays, of course, you get the measures back uh, on the internet the next day, at least I do, and you're just looking if something's a little too high, a little too low, and so you're in anxiety every time you go to the doctor. Every time you go to the dentist, you think he's going to find a cavity. And some people, they don't go to doctors because they're afraid <laughs> of what the doctor's going to find. You know, some people, <laughs> it's like a one of my disciples is a doctor. It says, he, he, he calls me up and he says, how's the blood pressure? And I said, ah, it's fine. He said, when's the last time you measured it? I said, if I don't measure it, it's fine. So anyway, so the point is, in the material world, it's like that. Because we're in an unnatural situation like the people in the plane. I love Prophet's example like that. That because we're an unnatural, and then Bhagavatam also says that fear and anxiety is due to the duality of this material world, life and death. So, anyways, oh, actually, there's, there's, uh, for the personalists, there are innumerable other planets known as Vaikuntha planets, it means anxiety, whereas the impersonalists remain in the Brahma Jyoti. What a punishment. Text 14. Uh, Ananyateta satatam yomam smarati nitya shaha, the shaham tulaba parta, nitya yuktasya yoginaha. Ananyateta without deviation of the mind, satatam always, yaha, anyone who, mam, me, Krishna, smarati remembers, nitya shaha, regularly, tasha, to him, aham, I am, su, lavaha. Very easy to achieve, parta, sanaprita. Nitya regularly, yuktasha engaged, yoginaha for the devotee. Uh, translation, for one who always remembers me without deviation, I am easy to obtain, O son of Pritha, because of its constant engagement in devotional service. So two ways to understand that. One way is if you're always remembering Krishna, you'll always keep serving him. Another way to remember that is if you're constantly engaged in devotional service, devotional service is non-different from Krishna, you'll be thinking of Krishna. For example, if you're driving a car and you're thinking of driving a car, you know, just really attentive at doing it, and you're doing something devotional, obviously, then that meditation on driving safely when you're driving to do something for Krishna is actually meditation on Krishna. Like the verse we quoted, Brahmarpanam, Brahma Havya, Brahmagno, Brahmanohutam, Brahma Tena Gantavyam, Brahma Karma Samadhinam. So if one's doing something for Krishna, and med one should meditate on it, because you should do it nicely. You know, 
I remember there was one devotee who didn't quite understand that point that actually meditated on doing something for Krishna, is Krishna. So in order to try to remember Krishna all the time, he pasted pictures of Krishna everywhere in his car. That's not a bad thing. But on the steering wheel, fortunately, he didn't paste any pictures on the gas pedal or the accelerator pedal or the brake. <laughs> You're not supposed to step on Krishna. But the whole car was covered with little tiny pictures of Krishna everywhere. And so he was thinking, meditating on Krishna, keeps looking. That <laughs> means you keep looking at all these pictures. Well, yeah, guess what, buddy? You look at the road, not at the pictures. And then you're constantly engaged in devotional service, and you're thinking of Krishna. And that makes it very easy. So in other words, find some service. Here we go back to Varnashram again. Varnashram means each and every one of us has things we like to do. Do it for Krishna. Of course, if you like to get drunk, how can you do that for Krishna? Not with liquor. You can do it for Krishna by getting drunk on the sound of the holy name. Yeah, why not? Just chant and you will get drunk on the sound of the holy name and there will be no adverse effects, no brain tissues destroyed. You become healthier. So there's ways to dovetail that. Every, almost everything, you know, I'm sure you can think of things that you can't dovetail like eating meat. But almost everything, no, eating you can dovetail because you eat prasadam. So there's ways, sort of, you can dovetail almost anything. So anyway, this verse especially describes the final destination attained by the unalloyed devotees who serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead in Bhakti Yoga. Uh, bhakti yoga means the yoga of simply trying to please Krishna without any self-centered interest. Previous verses have mentioned four different kinds of devotees. Remember we went over this? The four people who come to Krishna, the distressed, the inquisitive, those who seek material gain, and the speculative philosophers. Different processes of liberation have also been described. Karma yoga, which is good. Karma yoga means working for Krishna. That's fine. It's contained within bhakti yoga. Jnana yoga means to analyze things, try to get detached. That's also contained within Krishna consciousness. And hatha yoga mm, sometimes can be utilized in Krishna consciousness, but not necessarily. Uh, but we get the results of hatha yoga by executing Krishna consciousness. The principles of these yoga systems have some bhakti added, little, little bhakti. But this verse particularly mentions pure bhakti yoga without any mixture of jnana, karma, or hatha. <laughs> so in other words, you don't want anything gross for yourself. Gross. Or, <laughs> that word is going to be used wrong. We don't want anything uh, in terms of the gross sense gratification, you know, with the gross senses, not gross, horrible, but the uh, more, well, gross. <laughs> the, 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 the senses that are external, the external senses, okay, that's a better word, uh, like the tongue, the belly, genitals, etc. Uh, and then jnana, we're not simply interested in liberation or hatha. We're not interested in powers. And actually this is mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Mukti, mukti, siddhi, kam, sakalaya, shanta. That means gross, there's the word again, <laughs> external sense gratification, uh, liberation from the material world, because all these things are self-centered or powers because in hatha yoga actually one of the results of hatha yoga which is mentioned later in the bhagavatam is that one can get these mystic powers becoming smaller than the smallest bigger than the biggest lighter than a feather able to uh jump over tall buildings with a single bound superman uh literally as in anyway so a devotee is not interested he will use those things in Krishna's service, obviously, if a devotee uh, 
serves Krishna, he'll use his karma, his activity to serve Krishna. As indicated by the word ananya chetaha, that means nanya without any or devoid of anything else. In pure bhakti yoga, the devotee desires nothing but Krishna, in other words, to serve Krishna. When we say but Krishna, means to serve Krishna, not to possess Krishna. A pure devotee does not desire promotion to heavenly planets, nor, let me turn that off, uh, nor does he seek oneness with the Brahma Jodi or salvation and liberation from material entanglement. We explain why devotee doesn't want to go to heaven because it's just an attractive, more attractive version of the material world than we have here, and one can simply want to stay just like when one goes to Hawaii. One wants to stay in the material world. We mentioned many stories about that in previous classes. Nor does one seek oneness with the Brahma Jodi because that's boring. You don't get to do anything fun. It's like, okay, we will give you some anesthesia, eternal anesthesia. Would you like that? Uh, eternal coma. Well, not really eternal, but long coma. And salvation or liberation from material. We don't want to get out of this material world. We want to please Krishna. Of course, in the beginning, yes, people do want these things. Therefore, Krishna doesn't say, uh, give up those desires immediately. Uh, he expects you to gradually be shed of these desires by the chanting of the Lord's holy names. Just like a snake, I even use that example, a snake sheds his skin. I used to live in the forest for about 10 years. Yogi. So, uh, and every once in a while, we'd find an old snake skin hanging in my closet. Because a snake had shed his skin. That's how they grow. They don't grow by expanding the skin, they shed the skin. So we also grow by shedding the skins that are covering our consciousness. Cheto Dharp in the Majno. A pure devotee does not desire anything except to be in love with Krishna and Krishna's pleasure. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the pure devotee is called Nishkama, which means he has no desire for self-interest. Perfect peace belongs to him alone, not to them who strive for personal gain. Whereas a jnana yogi, karma yogi, or hatha yogi has his own selfish interest, a perfect devotee has no desire other than to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, karma yogi, jnana yogi, hatha yogi, they basically don't have a peaceful mind because they want something. And they don't, don't get satisfied by getting what they want. So, uh, but it's described, the same verse I just quoted from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Mukti Mukti Siddhi Kam Sakalaya Shanta, that if one simply wants gross, not gross, external sense gratification, or liberation, or powers, you know, that's karma yoga, jnana yoga, hatha yoga, then ashanta, shanta means peace. Shanti, shanti, om shanti. Uh, but ashanta means no peace. He will not be peaceful. And but Krishna bhakta, nishkam. And there's that word you see in the paragraph up there, nishkam, without self-centered desires. Atta eva shanta. He can achieve peace. So we all want to be peaceful. I mean, it's really bad to have our mind always disturbed, anxiety, depressed, uh, hankering, lamenting. You know, we're always hankering, when I get that, I will be happy. Lamenting, why did I lose that? I am miserable. <laughs> why did I not get that? I am miserable. So hankering and lamenting are part of our life here in the material world. We always want something. A pure devotee always engages in devotional service to Krishna in one of his various personal features. Krishna has various plenary expansions and incarnations such as Rama and Nishina. Plenary means on the plane. They're the same as Krishna. And a devotee can choose to fix his mind in loving service to any of these transcendental forms of the Supreme Lord. We talked about that before. 
Such a devotee meets with none of the problems that plague the practitioners of other yogas. Bhakti yoga is very simple and pure and easy to perform. One can simply begin by chanting Hare Krishna. The Lord is merciful to all, but as we have already explained, he is especially inclined to those who always serve him without deviation. The Lord helps such devotees in various ways. As stated in the Vedas in the Katha Upanishad, 1, 2, 23, Yam, Evaisha, Vrinte, Tena, Labhyas, Tushyaisha, Atma, Vivinute, Tanum, Swam. One who is fully surrendered and engaged in devotional service to the Supreme Lord can understand the Supreme Lord as he is. Hmm. As stated, and as stated in the Bhagavad Gita, 1010. This is actually one of the nutshell verses in the Bhagavad Gita, 8, 9, 10, and 11, in the 10th chapter, which we'll get to eventually. Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam. Uh, the Lord gives such a devotee sufficient intelligence so that ultimately the devotee can attain him in his spiritual kingdom. So the rest of that verse is what? Teisham Satati Yukkanam Vajatam Pritipur Vakam Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam Yenamam Vyandi Te. Tesham Satyu to those who are always connected to me in love. Bhajatam Priti Purvakam. And they are worshiping me, worshiping me with pretty, with love. Priti Purvakam, the path of love. Adadami, unto them, Buddhi Yogam Tam, I give them intelligence. Uh, what sort of intelligence? Yenamam Upyanti Te. The intelligence by which they can come to me. So the whole question is love. Like they say, all you need is love. And then everything comes out all right. The Lord gives such a devotee sufficient intelligence so that ultimately a devotee can attain him in his spiritual kingdom. That's all you really have to do. And Krishna will give you intelligence. Even if you're illiterate, like that devotee who was told by his guru to read the Bhagavad Gita every day, and that devotee was illiterate. But he did whatever he did with love. And when he did it with love, he understood the Bhagavad Gita in spite of not even being able to understand the Bhagavad Gita. Because Krishna with the heart, the Dhammi Bodhi Yogam Tam, Krishna I dwelling in the heart. Krishna's in our heart. I mean, he'll give us what we need. The special qualification of the pure devotee is that he's always thinking of Krishna without deviation, without considering the time or place. That means thinking of serving Krishna. There should be no impediments. He should be able to carry out his service anywhere and any time. Some say that the devotee should remain in holy places like Vrindavan or some holy town where the Lord lived. But a pure devotee can live anywhere and create the atmosphere of Vrindavan by his devotional service. It was Sri Advaita who told Lord Chaitanya, wherever you are, O Lord, there is Vrindavan. Yes, yeah, so some people actually say, you know, you just have to live in Vrindavan and just wait till you die. You know, as soon as you reach the ripe old age of 50, just go to Vrindavan and just say, let's wait. And when is death coming? Back to home, back to Godhead. It ain't easy like that. If you actually want to be in Vrindavan, it's not that you take it. Take it and you go to Vrindavan, you have to have the right consciousness. And if you have the right consciousness, wherever you are is Vrindavan. And if you don't, then you will not even be in Vrindavan when you're in Vrindavan. Simple as that. You won't like these demons who attack Krishna. Can you really say they were in Vrindavan? Because they didn't have Vrindavan consciousness. So, to be in Vrindavan, you have to have Vrindavan consciousness. As we mentioned before, there is a layer of yoga maya that covers the real Vrindavan. And so that keeps you from seeing the real Vrindavan. But if, you, if you're not covered by Mahamaya or yoga maya, you will see the real Vrindavan everywhere. Yomam Pashati Sarvatra Sarvam Chamani Pashati. You'll see wherever you go. As indicated by the words Satatam and Nitya Shaha. And especially you will see Vrindavan, I'm going back a little bit. You will see Vrindavan in the devotees. 
I was reading an amazing verse in the Bhagavatam today. And that verse said uh, that basically uh, one should take shelter of the pure devotees. And taking shelter of the pure devotees, uh, let me see if I, I mean, maybe tomorrow I'll find that verse, transcends any going to the holy places or anything like that. You know, someone, it's basically saying that's like a third class consciousness to think that Krishna is in the whole, only in the holy places and not in the place of the pure devotees. It's in the Bhagavatam. It's a verse in the 10th canto, and I really need to copy that verse and post it on the internet. It's indicated by the word satatam and nitya shaha, uh, which means, which means, always, regularly, and every day, a pure devotee constantly remembers Krishna and meditates upon him. These are the qualifications of the pure devotee for whom the Lord is most easily attainable. Bhakti yoga is the system that the Gita recommends above all others. Generally, the bhakti yogis are engaged in five different ways. We talked about this many times. Shanta bhakta, engaged in devotional service and neutrality. God is great. But there has to be some mixture of service too. God is great, God is great, God is great, God is great. Okay, nice. Dasha to dasha bhakta, engaged in devotional service as a servant. Of course, in the spiritual world, the shanta bhaktas, generally they're like trees, they do render some service but not so active. Dashavakta, that means like, for example, the servants of Krishna, like the Ruka and others who fan Krishna, which is pretty ecstatic. Mm. Uh, three, Sakya Bhakta, engage as friend, just like, uh, there's others like Madhu Mango, Sudam, Sridam. They're friends and, and, and they serve Krishna in different ways. They may serve Krishna by telling jokes. Like Madhu Mango, he's a famous jokester. And he's Krishna's best friend, one of Krishna's best friends. And he does things that are really funny. Like he's always asking for ladus. And he makes funny sounds by putting his hand under his armpit. And he tells Krishna, feed him a lot of ladus, and he will bless Krishna that Radharani will love him. And he does other funny things. Uh, one funny thing that comes to mind is that uh, one time Krishna came back from pasturing the cows very late. And Mother Yashoda, because, you know, he was hanging out with his girlfriends. And Mother Yashoda asked Krishna, why are you late? And Madhu Mango said, well, he was looking at the girls. And, and Krishna just basically said, 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 looks at him, doesn't say out loud, shut up. He said, wish this guy would just shut up. It's getting him in trouble. So anyways, so you have these different types of friends. You know, there's intimate friends. Anyway, that's all described in the uh, Nectar Devotion, the different types of friends that Krishna has. Some are so intimate that some actually are superior to Krishna or act superior, not in an ontological way they're superior, but act superior uh, and they give Krishna instructions. Uh, and then there's Vatsalya Bhakta, uh, those who engage as parents like Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj, or those who assist Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj will have that same type of affection. Uh, in Vrindavan, basically everyone of the, those in Vatsalya uh, Ras want to have Krishna as their son. And guess what happens? Sometimes Krishna arranges a special pastime so everybody can have Krishna as, a, as their son. Even the cows can have Krishna as their son. How does Krishna do that? Well, Krishna arranges that Lord Brahma one time steals all the cows and the coward boys, and then Krishna himself has to expand himself and take the form of all these different living entities, the uh, coward boys and the calves, and all their mothers and fathers become completely ecstatic, loving their kid more than they've ever loved their kid before because their kid is now Krishna. So Krishna fulfills their particular desires. So that's parental affection. And five, Madhurya Bhakta engaged as a conjugal lover of the Supreme Lord. So there you have uh, Shimati Radharani, uh, the principal gopis, uh, the sakis. You know, anyway, it's, it's, it's a whole dramatic loving exchange that takes place. You have those who assist the gopis, 
And so every one of us has one of those different relationships. And those relationships are colored from some time, from time to time, by the indirect rasas like shock or chivalry or humor. Like I said with Madhu Mangal, that's an indirect rasa that flavors his friendship rasa from time to time, practically most of the time, with Madhu Mangal. So in any of these ways, the pure devotees or the pure devotee is always constantly engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Supreme Lord and cannot forget the Supreme Lord, and so for him the Lord is easily attained. So in this world, of course, we engage in a different type of service, at least externally, and that's usually and should be assisting his divine grace to the Prabhupada in spreading the Krishna conscious movement. And that assistance is on the same level as serving the residents of Vrindavan. It is serving the residents of Vrindavan. It is on the completely pure spiritual level because it is Sankirtan. A pure devotee cannot forget the Supreme Lord for a moment, and similarly, the Supreme Lord cannot forget his pure devotee for a moment. It's reciprocal. This is the great blessing of the Krishna conscious process of chanting the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. And text 15. Mamu Vechupuna Janma Dukalayam Shashvatam Napnu Yanti Panti Mahatmana Samsiddhim Paramam Gataha Mam, me, Upecha achieving Punaha, again, Janma, birth. Dukkha, alayam, place of miseries. Ashashvatam, temporary, na, never. Abduvanti, attain, maha, atma, naha, the great souls. Sang, sitting, perfection, paramam, ultimate, kataha, having achieved. After attaining me, the great souls who are yogis in devotion, never return to this temporary world which is full of miseries. Dukkhalayam, ashashvatam, which, which basically means it's miserable and it's temporary. When we said, because of the anxiety. Because they've attained the highest perfection. I mean, imagine, let's say, imagine one is in Hawaii and everything's nice. But you'd really understand that after a while, it has to come to an end. Some way or other. Your bank account runs out. You catch the virus. You get old. You get sick. You get kicked out of the house. I mean, it's anxiety over people, too. You know, you have your anxiety. Oh, I hope this person is all right. I hope that person is all right. And that's another thing. I mean, just being here and having connections with other people causes anxiety. It's like, you know, one of my god brothers or someone, or practically anybody that uh, I'm connected to, Krishna conscious, is in the hospital or they're in a dangerous situation. I mean, anxiety over it. Of course, that anxiety over a devotee is spiritual. But still, it's anxiety. Of course, the spiritual anxiety over a devotee is purified. I have to tell you that one. But still, the nature of this world is, it is full of anxiety. Unless you're just like completely in the mode of ignorance. You know, let's say if you're drunk, lying on the ground, rolling in your own vomit, you're probably not in too much anxiety until you wake up the next morning. Since this temporary material world is full of the miseries of birth, old age, disease, and death, naturally he who achieves the highest perfection and attains the supreme planet Krishna, Loka, the local Vrindavan, does not wish to return unless he is asked by Krishna to return to help others, like Prabhupada was. The Supreme Planet is described in the Vedic literature as, as Abhyakta, it's not manifest to us, and Akshara and Paramagati is the supreme abode, has no material qualities. In other words, that planet is beyond our material vision. It is inexplicable and is the highest goal, the destination for the Mahatmas, great soul. Maha means great, Atma means soul, person. The Mahatmas receive transcendental messages from the realized devotees and thus gradually develop devotional service in Krishna consciousness and become absorbed in transcendental service that they no longer desire, become so absorbed, that they no longer desire elevation to any of the material planets. 
nor do they even want to be transferred to any spiritual planet. In other words, we just want service. We want to please Krishna. There's some way overflowing with love. There's no more self-centeredness. Even you're, you're not thinking, get me out of the material world. I tell that story that when I first joined the Krishna Conscious Society, I really wanted liberation as well as knowledge. And I was praying, Krishna, as I went to sleep every night, Krishna, please, kill me, take me back to God and get me out of this place. I wasn't that miserable, but I just thought, you know, I want to go back to the spiritual world. Sounds like fun there. You can eat anything you want. It's like, if any of you know that song, Alice's Restaurant, you can get anything you want in the spiritual planets. Anyway, so I was thinking like that, you know, I heard that you can go to a tree and ask for ladus from the tree and go to a cow and you can ask for ice cream from the cow. And I thought, really, got to go there. So after a while, that sort of desire for liberation or just going to the spiritual planet disappears and now we just want to somehow or other please Prabhupada and please Krishna. If Krishna would only smile upon me, then that would be the perfection of my life. They only want Krishna and Krishna's association, nothing else. That is the highest perfection of life. This verse specifically mentions the personalist devotees of the Supreme Lord Krishna. Impersonalists, they just want to get the hell out of here. These devotees, or they're envious of Krishna and they just want to just like be cry, you know, they don't like what Krishna did in the material world. Uh, these devotees in Krishna consciousness achieve the highest perfection of life. In other words, they are the supreme souls. And text 16, it's a very important verse. That shows you that even if you go to Hawaii, it's still miserable there. Although you'll be so bewildered, you will not think it's miserable. You will think, it's so nice, it's like intoxication, it's so nice. It ain't nice. Anyway, Abrahma Bhuvanal Lokaha Punar Avar Dinawarjuna Mamu Pechi Dukontiya Punar Janmana Vijate Abrahma Bhuvanat Up to the Brahma Loka planet. Let me explain, that's the topmost planet in the material sphere. Topmost, the best place. And the whole universe is managed from there. I mean, at least the ultimate manager, the uh, what we call this? chief executive officer. No, 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 chief executive officer would be like Indra, whatever. Anyway, the owner, not the owner, Krishna's the owner, the boss, the sub boss. Uh, up to the Brahma Loka planet, Lokaha, the planetary system, Punaha again, Avartinaha, returning Arjuna or Arjuna, Mom unto me, Upecha arriving. Two but Kontiya, O son of Kunti, Puna, Janma, rebirth. No, never, did you take? And this is the description of this world from the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest, all are places of misery where repeated birth and death take place, but one who attains my abode, O son of Kunti, never takes birth again. And that's because of the anxiety, distress. And ultimately, the highest happiness in this world is simply the cessation of an urge, which is causing us. Distress. Like you have the urge to eat, and so when you satisfy it, you don't want to eat anymore. It's a satiation point. You know, so it's it's sort of like a neutral thing. Or like Lord Chaitanya gives the example of the dunking stool, the punishment they used to give people. Put them under the water, criminals that is. Put them under the water for about three minutes and take them up, let them breathe, and when they breathe they think this is ecstasy. Just breathing is ecstasy. Because in, in the comparison, sukha dukkha da, of happiness and distress, in duality, you need distress to enjoy the happiness of this world. Another point we can make about happiness, or misery, is that Krishna consciousness is so blissful that there's no comparison to it. It's like comparison a drop of ocean water to the whole ocean. When you think of <laughs> The material happiness is like a drop, not even a drop. So, therefore, when you go to Krishna's abode, you've actually realized you've had your experience, you tried it out, been there, seen it, done it, and you say, I'm not going back. All kinds of yogis, karma, jnana, all that. 
etc., eventually have to attain devotional perfection, bhakti yoga, Krishna consciousness before they can go to Krishna's transcendental boat and then return because you have to love Krishna. Krishna's not going to let you in. That's the price. But you just have to really want to please Krishna. You have to be bhakti. You have to be full of love. Those who attain the highest material planets and planets of the demigods are again subject to the repeated birth and death. We mentioned that the other day, as you're, when your good karma comes out, uh, runs out, then you come back to the earth planet. As persons on earth are elevated to higher planets, people on the higher planets, such as Brahma Loka, Chandra Loka, Nidra Loka, fall down to earth. People going up, people go down. The elevator goes both ways. The practice of sacrifice called Panchagni Vidya, recommended in the Chandokya Upanishad, enables one to achieve Brahma Loka. But if on Brahma Loka one does not cultivate Krishna consciousness, then he must return to earth. Or what goes up must come down. Those who progress in Krishna consciousness on the higher planets are gradually elevated to higher and higher planets. And at the time of universal devastation means when the whole thing is over. That's a long time. Don't wait for it. A long time. Universal devastation occurs at the end of Lord Brahma's life. You're only in the middle. And his life is very long because one day is a thousand Divya Yuga. Divya Yuga is like the combination of Satcha, Treta, Dwarpa, and Kali. So a thousand loads together is Brahma's one day. Phew! And a thousand are Brahma's night. So don't wait for it to happen. Uh, the day of judgment is not coming for a long time. And even when it happens, then after that, there's going to be another creation, so there's no final end time. Time is eternal, circular. Our transfer to the uh, eternal spiritual kingdom. Baladeva Vidyabhushan is commentary on the Bhagavad Gita quotes this verse. Brahmana saha te sarve samprapte prati shanchave parasyante kritatmana pravishanti param padam when there's a devastation of this material universe, that's after a long time, Brahma and his devotees who are constantly engaged in Krishna consciousness are all transferred to the spiritual universe and to specific spiritual planets according to their desires. As long as they are pure, if they're not, no, then you have to enter into the Mahavishnu during the time of the devastation and when there's another creation, you come out again and go through the whole thing again and again. It's like that myth of uh, Sisyphus in Greek mythology. So, on that happy note, I don't know how happy that is, uh, we will uh, stop here and take some questions. Let's, whoops. My, my mouse is giving me trouble. A mouse is something on a computer, in case you haven't figured that out. Okay, let's open it up for questions. Uh, give me one second. Mouse, demoniac mouse. Here we go. Now the mouse is cooperating. So, all right, so who has a question? Ask your question. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Srila Prabhupada. This is all Prashant. Oh, Prashant, how are you? I am good, Maharaj. Thank you so much. And uh, somehow I was fortunate enough to start uh, attending the classes since this Monday. I moved from Boise. Oh, very nice. Where are you, where are you living now? Uh, I'm in uh, North Carolina, Apex, Maharaj. So I was doing Fantastic. a work from home. Fantastic. Hare Krishna. Fantastic. So it's nice to see you. So, uh, all right. So, yeah. yeah. Question? Yes, Maharaj. So I was uh, like, you know, while, while I was listening to your lecture, um, the question that I was having was, how do... I know that, or we know that, you know, this would be my last life that I am going back to Godhead. Uh, like when all, I, I am not like a big devotee or anything, but all I do is 16 rounds of chanting and listen to Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam wherever yeah. possible, whoever is speaking and uh, eat uh, the remnants of whatever 
is offered to the Lord. So how do you know it's your last life? Well, just like when you buy something at the store, you get a guarantee. Of course, the guarantee is that you buy it. When you buy something, they're just very limited guarantees. So Srila Prabhupada, our founder Acharya, is uh, extremely merciful. We find that Lord Chaitanya is very merciful, as we hear in the Mahal Mahavad Nyaya, Krishna Prema Padayate, Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Namani, Gorda Pasena Maha. And Srila Prabhupada is, in one sense, more merciful than the Lord himself. And Srila Prabhupada has said, if we continue, that means me and you, or whoever, continue chanting the Lord's holy names uh, for our whole life without deviation and doing other things like reading Srimad Bhagavatam, then you will get purified. The process works. And, of course, don't commit offenses. I mean, there's other things that we really have to be aware of about not committing offenses, but just basically being a simple devotee. Uh, actually, actually, it says in the Bible, the meek shall inherit the earth. So you are more fortunate than me because you're just a nice, nice, simple devotee. And look at me, big position, so much facility. People think I'm nice when I'm actually not nice. So, <laughs> so I mean... You're more fortunate because you no, are. No, Maharaj, because of mercy of, uh, you know, Maharajas like you, we got to hear Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam. At least in my lifetime, I never thought that I would be listening. All I thought was maybe after some eight or nine generations, someone is going to open Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavatam. But by the fortunate association of the devotees and all, I was able to do that. At least I read one sloka a day. Yes, and by the fortunate association of his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada, here I am. Uh, so, it's actually Prabhupada's, Prabhupada's mercy, like we were talking about yesterday when Prabhupada was laughing during the Kirtan in Los Angeles, and the devotees asked Prabhupada, why you were laughing? And Prabhupada said, Narada Muni was laughing, he was there. And Prabhupada said, he was laughing because of all, he was watching all the Malachas and Yavanas chant and dance the holy names. But, you know, there's hope. Even for someone like me, there's hope. Just like uh, we have the story of Magrari. He became a great devotee, and he was certainly Malach and Yavana. And, of course, Valmiki, same thing. So by the chanting of the Lord's holy names, then, Ahobhattaswa pachato gadiyan yaji vagari vartate namatupyam. Te pusta pustuhu vrsharsna arya brahmanuchar nama granantiyate. How wonderful it is if one is chanting the holy names. It's understood that he's actually overcome or surpassed or already performed all the preliminary Vedic rituals. So that's Prabhupada's mercy and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy. Anyway, so we have Prabhupada's guarantee. It's in writing. He will go back to Godhead. Uh, and of course, during the process of purification within this lifetime, there'll be many trials and tribulations. We understand that. And uh, things that may attract you. And if you just continue on the path, or stay, or Prabhupada gave the example, stay on the boat, don't jump off the boat. <laughs> I remember when I was young, uh, my family had many boats, you know, and we would go in the ocean with the boats, and sometimes the o it was rocking back and forth, and sometimes I just wanted to get out. And actually, and so we had like a little small boat connected with the big boat. And sometimes I just wanted to jump in the small boat and get out, but the small boat would have gotten completely inundated with water. Of course, there is that story that when we landed on the land, I ran away. But that's another story for another time. <laughs> but anyway, we're in the boat of Krishna Ganji. Just stay in the boat going back to Godhead. And the water in the material ocean becomes shrunk to the size of the water in the uh, calf's hoof print by the process of Krishna consciousness. So, Dina Hina Yati Chilo Harina Mudrilo. Actually, one who takes up Krishna consciousness, Dina Hina, it doesn't matter. Uh, fallen or elevated, Yati Chilo, Harina Mudrilo, one who takes up the process of Harina, can go back to the spiritual world. That's wonderful. Thank you so so, so that's, that's called, actually, that's called Ashabanda. 
Ashwabandha means hope against hope. Rupa Goswami talks about that in the Nectar of Devotion. That even though we may have no good qualifications or attachment for the process of hearing and chanting, we have this great faith and hope in Krishna that he will take us. And Krishna is like that. Hey Krishna Karna Sindhu. Dina Bandhu Jagatpate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta, Mustate. Oh Krishna, you're a Karana Sindhu. You're an ocean of mercy. And, uh, you know, so phew, ocean of mercy means there's no limit to an ocean. So that's that's our particular faith. So don't worry, be happy, Shan Hari Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I'm actually looking forward to meet you. <laughs> yes, uh, hopefully you can <laughs> hopefully when there's coronavirus or before the coronavirus that we can always speak with our masks on. Fortunately, the virus is not passed when we're doing Zoom conferences or else we'd have to give Zoom conferences like this. Yeah, that would not be so good. So I'm not worried about my microphone catching the virus. I'm, so I'm just traveling tomorrow to uh, Atlanta, but I'll be back on August 10th. So sometime after that one, I wanted to see if I can meet you in the temple. Yes, I was August told. 10th, that's good. So you'll be here for Janmashtami, right? Uh, when is Janmashtami, Maharaj? I'm uh, the sure. 11th of August. I'll make sure that definitely I'll be there, Maharaj. Well, see, on Janmashtami, we're not going to have any public programs unfortunately. It's going to be mostly online, but people are going to be able to take darshan throughout the day. And even the midnight RT is going to have to be online because we have these restrictions. We want to protect protect everyone, protect you and all the devotees. Uh, but there'll be service to do, plenty of service. You know Aditya Narayan Prabhu, right? Yes, yes, him? Maharaj. Last Friday, I got introduced to him. Yes. Yeah, he's he's really good devotee. He's organizes everything, and uh, he is great. He's a great devotee. Organizes the congregation, and uh, uh, Leela Shakti is the temple president here, so she's she's also online. You see her name, Ishwara Chaitanya. And that's not her, of course. <laughs> that's her son. Both her son and daughter are initiated devotees, and they're little 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 kids. Not this oh. little, maybe a little bigger than that. Nice, so, fortunate souls that they have started off uh, Krishna consciousness in the very early stage. Yes. Oh, yeah. Extremely fortunate. And we have some. Uh, uh, we have uh, Champaka Lata, who's also online here, who started Krishna consciousness from her whole life. She's been Krishna conscious, and she teaches dance. Mataji. She teaches dance to the girls. And she's, she's actually a professional Bharat Natchum dancer, has been doing it her whole life. And she had uh, her, what, Arun Getram, and she's professional. I don't do anything. I'm not professional anything. I just hang out here and let everybody else do the service. Okay. You are guiding us all to go in that boat, Maharaj, what you were just speaking about, not to leave the boat. That is where you are the guide. Yeah, leave the boat. That's true. Don't leave the boat. At least I yeah. do that. I stay in the boat. I stay in the boat and just eat prasadam. <laughs> That's good. At least I'm in the boat. Okay. Anyone else have a question before we end tonight? Hi, Krishna Gurudev. Oh, did you, Leela? I thought you were going to visit us. Oh, I'm hoping to as well. Um, I'm actually going to with Lila Shakti tomorrow, so we'll figure it out. Do um, you have a question? Yes, I do. Please accept my obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Glories to Prabhupada. Um, you mentioned uh, you mentioned things like um, uh, what we do, we do for Krishna. So everything that we do, we do to offer to Krishna. And um, I'm thinking now, especially in these kind of times because of COVID, um, like the temple here in Dallas is in lockdown. So I'm not really getting the association. And when I joined the movement, as you know, um, association was basically what brought me to the movement. So it's really important yeah. for me. And so I'm just trying to figure out a way to stay enthusiastic in the movement. Like I want to, if I'm at home the majority of the time, 
Um, I'm just wondering, like, what do you recommend in ways to stay enthusiastic in times like these when it's hard to do the things that you actually enjoy doing? Yeah, I mean, as far as association, the one answer is Zoom. <laughs> we can associate with the other drugs. Like we have, I have more association now than I've ever had before, which is mm -hmm. kind of cool. Uh, but as far as practical service, there's different things according to your own abilities and propensities. I mean, it just depends on what you like to do. You can cook things and offer it to Krishna. You could sew for the deities there in Dallas. You can ask someone, you know, I mean, it, it just depends on what you want to do. I mean, it's not, there's not just one size fits all. Or uh, some people are going on the internet like me and talking to people and trying to preach and cultivate people. And even if you're not able to do this in a big way, you can do it one on one, which, I, which is a, a lot of my internet uh, interaction is actually just with one other person on the screen, just talking to them or counseling them or. Wow. That was God. <laughs> he concurs. OK, OK, Krishna, I will behave. Yes, Krishna. <laughs> Yes, Krishna, whatever you want. <laughs> so anyways, Krishna has a temper there. So, uh, so what I find is that, I mean, everybody has friends. Mm. So I find it extremely effective that even if you can't you know, like be talking to quite a bunch of people, like right now we have 26 people here and a lot of people on Facebook, mm. then you can actually talk to people who are your friends and cultivate them in Krishna consciousness. Because the unique, wonderful thing about Corona virus time is that everybody's at home. Yeah. And a lot of people are feeling like really cabin fever at this particular point, mm -hmm. and they want to reach out. So we can be friends to people in Krishna consciousness and just reach out. And like I said, a lot of the stuff I do is just one-on-one. -on -one. I, ha I have all sorts of devices for just doing one-on-one -on -one conversations. For example, you know, I have a thing called a Facebook portal, which actually has a camera that just follows me everywhere. And then I can just talk to people one on one and have a wonderful conversation with them. Even got it for my mother. Uh, so I can have a conversation with her in New York. So think about what you can do for Krishna, and what you like to do. And yeah. there's a, you know, like, like, like there's the same, when life gives you lemon, you make a lemonade. Yeah. So figure out how to utilize this situation, the COVID situation, to turn into something really positive. And uh, for me, it's a really positive experience. I mean, there's things I'd like to do. I'd like to hop on a plane and just, you know, fly around the world and whatever, and talk to see everybody personally. Obviously, I'd love to do that. I got people all over. Right now, there's people from uh, Fiji who are watching. I can see at least two people from Fiji who are watching. Subok and uh, Gokul Bandhu are my disciples there. And, and you got people calling me from Australia. And so I'd love to do that. But right now, this is what Krishna's given us. I just don't have a facility to do anything else right now. And you just see what you can do given the present facilities. And if you have the internet and a computer, in one sense, the sky's the limit. So, but you figure it out, it may not be that for you. It may be that you sew something for Krishna. Maybe that you paint for Krishna. Maybe that you do a study of some Vaishnava literature for Krishna. Maybe you write an article for Back to Godhead. I mean, it's just like, wow, the sky's the limit. It's different, it's a challenge. I'm not saying it's not difficult, difficult, it is difficult, but it's a real challenge. And if we rise to the challenge, we can make the best use of uh, what's called a bad bargain. And, uh, you know, in the beginning, I was just thinking, what am I going to do? But then I just remembered the internet. I just thought, wow, computer, internet, what's that for? <laughs> And of course, I was already using the internet for so many things, but but I never did Zoom before. I mean, at the most I did was like a Skype call with someone. 
So this is, to me, this is ecstatic. How many devotees am I seeing right now? I'm seeing, you know, 26. I don't see everyone's smiling face. Some people are, some people are just sleeping and they don't want to show me that they're sleeping <laughs> or they're eating. So, you know, obviously I don't see those people. Or some people are doing business or some people are counting their money. You know, they don't want to show me they're counting their money. <laughs> oh, now everybody's showing me. Or some people are freezing to death like Sudharma in New Zealand. Hey, Hare Krishna, I wasn't sleeping. <laughs> All right, you were freezing to death. <laughs> so some people are doing things, but it's, you know, it's just nice to see people. And uh, I'm having the time of my life like this. This interacting. So, but you figure out what you what fits you. I agree. Thank you so much. It's it's more like being at the temple and uh, doing service yeah. there, and like you know, like the the stuff I used to do when I was in Denver. And it, for me, I feel I, I'm I feel really nostalgic for that time a lot because since then I haven't had that. Basically, I haven't had that since. So I'm trying to find ways now, like I'm reading more, I'm, I'm trying to tune into your classes more, I'm trying to tune into multiple classes online as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, there is that lack still, but I am, you know, I guess maybe I will have to try something different. Or you can move to North Carolina, we'll give you some service. Sorry, that would be the goal. <laughs> Actually, Actually, one thing I do when I want like a really good kirtan that I appreciate, there's this one singing group called the Madhavas who live in Vrindavan. And I just turn them on and I just start dancing around here. You know, so I, I can have a big kirtan with all... I was listening to one kirtan they were doing, Raghupati Raghava Raja Ram, Patita Pavana Sita Ram, and they were doing it in a bar and they got everybody up and dancing, and I just thought, wow. You know, so I was, I was dancing with them, so I had my kirtan for the day. So, Raghu Pati Raghu. And it was actually an amazing video, because first in the video, everyone's sitting down in the bar, some lady is half drunk at the, at the bar, and there they're chanting, and when, as soon as they hear, they didn't relate so much to Hare Krishna, but as soon as they heard, Raghupati Raghupati, which most people in India relate to more. They all got up from their chairs and were just like jiving around. And so, you know, so I play a kirtan like that and I just, be, I start rolling on the ground in ecstasy. So, but one day we'll have virtual reality for you. Where you can just put on glasses and be like in the room. But hopefully the coronavirus will be over by that time. But yes, it's, it's difficult. It is difficult and one really has to adjust things and change one's lifestyle. Oh, someone is cutting vegetables with a knife. Oh my God. <laughs> it's interesting not to be able to see everybody and the people don't want me to see them. They put themselves on, uh, they take the camera. Oh, Krishna Chandra's there. Oh, you're following Chaturmasha again. And Adi Lila is there. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hey, like Ine. <laughs> yes, it's good Maharaj. to see we. I miss you. <laughs> I also miss you, Maharaj. So one day you will come again. Yeah, this year I miss your cooking. I didn't cook for you. Yeah, I miss your cooking too. I've already lost like a few pounds this week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm starving to death. I mean, all they're giving me here is sauerkraut. <laughs> <laughs> they won't let me. They, they won't let me eat anything else. It's sauerkraut and raw carrots. I mean, it's just like it's too much. Okay. Okay. They we have on a prison diet here. Okay. <laughs> I think we. I think we have to end. Uh, we had enough questions and enough humor for tonight. So thank you very much. We'll see everybody. Uh, well, tomorrow's Saturday. We'll see everybody tomorrow night at the same time. All glorious to His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai, Gaur Premananda, Hari Hari. Hari.